Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Integumentary System. In this unit, we will be discussing the integumentary system. The objectives for this unit, the integumentary system, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce various medical terms related to the integumentary system. Describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the integumentary systems. The organs of the integumentary system include the skin, hair, nails, both fingernails and toenails, sebaceous glands, and sweat glands. The integumentary system is an extremely large, flat, flexible body system that covers the entire surface of the body. The primary functions of the integumentary system are protection, temperature regulation, and secretion of fluids. The integumentary system also houses nerve receptors. The skin serves as a protective membrane against invasion from bacteria and other potentially harmful organisms. The skin also contains millions of nerve receptors that detect pain, touch, heat, cold, and pressure. The skin contains many, many thousands of sweat glands, which assist in maintaining the body's internal temperature by secreting sweat. Sweat evaporates for a cooling effect. Blood vessels located in the skin also help to regulate the body's temperature by constricting and dilating as appropriate. The skin is composed of three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. The epidermis is the thin outer membrane layer. The dermis is the middle fibrous connective tissue layer. The subcutaneous layer is the innermost layer that is composed of fatty tissue. Located within the dermis are various accessory organs these include the hair, fingernails and toenails, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Hair covers most of the body, although its consistency and color vary from one part of the body to another and from one person to the next. The nails cover and protect the ends of fingers and toes, as these areas can be easily traumatized. Sweat glands produce perspiration, which functions to cool the body. Sebaceous glands secrete oil, which lubricates the hair and skin, preventing it from drying and cracking. Burns are a common injury to the integumentary system. Burns can be caused by scalding hot water, fires, flammable liquids and gases. There are three types of burns depending on how severe the damage is to the skin and its underlying tissues. The three classifications of burns are first degree, second degree, and third degree. First degree burns damage only the outer layer of skin and are the most shallow or superficial. First degree burns result in red, swollen, and painful skin. The burned area whitens when touched, but does not develop blisters. Second degree burns damage the outer layer and the layer underneath it. These burns are also referred to as partial thickness burns. Second-degree burns are sometimes further described as superficial, involving the more superficial part of the dermis, or deep, involving the superficial and deep parts of the dermis. Second-degree burns are pink or red, swollen, and painful, 
and they develop blisters that may ooze a clear fluid. The burned area may blanch or whiten when touched. Third-degree burns damage or destroy the deepest layer of skin and tissues underneath. These burns are also called full-thickness burns, since they involve all three layers of skin, epidermis, dermis, and fat layer. Usually, the sweat glands, hair follicles, and nerve endings are destroyed as well. Third-degree burns are not painful because the nerves have been destroyed. The skin becomes leathery and may be white, black or bright red. The burned area does not blanch when touched, and hair can easily be pulled from the roots without pain. The next integumentary system condition that we'll explore is skin cancer. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the United States. Each year, about one million people in the U.S. find out that they have skin cancer. Skin cancer is 100% curable if found early and treated right away. The two most common types of skin cancer are basal cell cancer and squamous cell cancer. These are slow-growing cancers and seldom spread to other parts of the body. They are usually found on the head, face, neck, hands, and arms. The top left picture on this slide is of a squamous cell cancer of the scalp. Another type of skin cancer, melanoma, is more dangerous but less common. Melanomas are considered malignant tumors and do spread to other parts of the body. The top right picture is of a melanoma. Anyone can get skin cancer, but it is more common in people who spend a lot of time in the sun or have been sunburned. Skin cancer is more common among people who have light-colored skin, hair, and eyes, have a family member with skin cancer, and are over age 50. These individuals should have frequent self-skin examinations. Learning to recognize skin cancer is very essential for early detection and treatment. While skin cancer is 100% curable if discovered early, it is much better to prevent than to treat. Prevention involves avoiding long exposure to the sun and the use of SPF 15 to 30 sunscreen lotion. The next common condition of the integumentary system is wounds. Wounds include cuts, scrapes, scratches, and punctured skin. Wounds often occur as a result of an accident or injury, but surgical incisions, sutures, and stitches also cause wounds. Minor wounds usually aren't serious, but even cuts and scrapes require care. Serious and infected wounds require medical attention. You should also seek medical attention if the wound is deep, if you cannot close it yourself, if you cannot stop the bleeding or get the dirt out, or if it does not heal. Earlier in this lecture, we discussed the organs that comprise the integumentary system. Hair was included on that list. Some of the most common hair problems include hair loss, infections, and disorders causing itching and scaling. Hair loss, or alopecia, is a frequent concern for both men and women. Male pattern baldness 
is the most common cause of hair loss in men. Male pattern baldness results in a receding hairline and baldness on the top of the head. Women may develop female pattern baldness in which the hair becomes thin over the entire scalp. Hair loss or alopecia can be a sign of serious diseases, especially if the hair loss occurs rapidly. Effective treatment is possible for only a small number of patients. Some hair loss patients may have to accept baldness or cover it up with wigs or hair transplants. Infections of the scalp include bacterial infection of hair follicles, infestation of head lice, and fungal infection of the scalp, or ringworm. Itching and excessive flaking of the scalp is seen with both dandruff and psoriasis. We also indicated that the fingernails and toenails are included within the integumentary system. Your toenails and fingernails protect the tissues of your toes and fingers. They are composed of layers of hardened protein called keratin, which is also in your hair and skin. The fingernails and toenails are a clue to your overall health. Healthy nails are usually smooth and consistent in color. Specific types of nail discoloration and changes in growth rate can signal various lung, heart, kidney, and liver diseases, as well as diabetes and anemia. Nail problems that sometimes require treatment include bacterial and fungal infections, ingrown nails, tumors, and warts. Keeping nails clean, dry, and trimmed can help you avoid some problems. Here are some of the key word parts for the integumentary system along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Now let's put some of this information about the integumentary system to use in order to solve the following mystery. Jane is seen in the ER with skin on her arm that is red, swollen, painful, and blanches when touched. The skin has also developed oozing blisters. This is indicative of which condition? First degree burns, second degree burns, third degree burns. Did you guess second degree burns? You may remember from this lecture that second degree burns damage the outer layer and the layer underneath it. These burns are also referred to as partial thickness burns. Second degree burns are sometimes further described as superficial, involving the more superficial part of the dermis, or deep, involving the superficial and deep parts of the dermis. Second degree burns are pink or red, swollen and painful, and they develop blisters that may ooze a clear fluid. The burned area may blanch when touched. This concludes the integumentary system. In summary, we covered various medical terms related to the integumentary system and described common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the integumentary systems.